Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode of Hot News, where we're going to go over all of the tech news that came across my table from the Internet. And we're going to start off with AMD having some big news with regards to their Zen 4 CPUs, at least allegedly, because there's a new rumor coming out that's saying Zen 4 should be a 29% IPC increase over Zen 3, which would just be absolutely insane, considering we just got a 20% boost from going from Zen 2 to Zen 3. So so another 30% boost would just put them into the stratosphere and kind of place them in a position where Intel would not be easily able to catch up to them. This is coming from a report from Chips and Cheese and on this article in Overclock 3D, they're mentioning the possibility that there might be some sort of Zen 3 Plus that AMD might release. I'm skeptical of that simply because AMD hasn't mentioned that. We have no indication that we're going to get a half architecture at any time soon. And you can even see in their roadmap that they have right here that Zen 3 goes directly into Zen 4. But they also showed that Zen went into Zen 2 when we had a stopgap Zen Plus generations. So it's hard to say whether or not we're going to be getting that Zen 3 Plus, but Zen 4 should be dropping sometime in 2022. I wouldn't expect that we'd have to wait that long for the next generation. We'll obviously keep an eye on it. We're still early on. We just just got Zen 3. Actually, most people still don't even have Zen 3. But if AMD can pull off another massive IPC increase, another generational leap in performance, they will just continue to reap the rewards of cash from our pockets into theirs. Which, in case you don't want to drop more cash on CPUs than you need to because you pulled it out of the socket wrong and you bent the pins, well, there's a new product that is just the perfect solution for you. This $1.50 CPU protection bracket from GLID Solutions might solve your problems. We've seen this before, but only released in Asia. This is the first product available in the US that you can see installs on your CPU mount setup and then keeps it so that when you take off the cooler, your CPU does not come with it. You got to twist and then pull my friends don't twist and pull. That's that's how you get those bent pins. Twist it. Yeah. Pull it. <laughs> twist, unlock the, the thermal juice and then rip it off. That's the idea. What's well, also the idea when it comes to any sort of RTX 30 series cards is just scalp them, get the best price that you can. And that is apparently what retailers are doing in Pakistan because they have the RTX 3060 before anybody else is even selling it. And they are selling it for 750 US dollars, which the retail price is supposed to be, you know, half that at $329. Obviously you're paying for the fact that you're one of the first people in the world to get it, but then also the fact that you, what else are you gonna get do? Gonna buy some other card, huh? No, like this RTX 3090 Hall of Fame, which we now have pricing on. This Galax monstrosity is looking to start, start my friends at roughly $3,000 USD and then go all the way up to $4,000 for either the Hoff, the Hoff Limited or the Hoff Premium. That's a lot of cash. Just, I don't, never buying this. Just 4,000. Sorry, I can't hear poor people. But what's more, my speed for my pocketbook is the 1050 Ti, which according to Tech Yes City and his conversation with retailers in Australia, Nvidia is starting to supply these again. The 1050 Ti might not be so popular for miners because it's only on four gigabytes of VRAM and Ethereum can only use GPUs with more than four gigabytes. So a card like this might actually be able to be produced on the low end, not be as appealing to miners, and then people will still be able to get a low end GPU. We'll leave a link in the video description. Go ahead and watch his video on it. But suffice to say, yeah, we're basically in that stage and throw of the mining scene where everything's out of stock. You just got to get a card where you can and who cares if it's a 1050 Ti because Nvidia is only releasing RTX 30 series. They haven't even talked about replacing the 16 series. So just buy what you can friends, hunker down, bunker down, get safe and sound and cozy with your GPUs and don't let no miners come for it. They're coming for your GPUs. Okay, my friends, you got to protect them with beans. Beans. Okay, nobody, no miner is going to want your GPU after you've soaked it in beans. Beans. None. I promise you. So protect them, protect yourself and protect your future friends, which Intel doesn't care about protecting anybody's future. If you bought a B460 or H410 chipset motherboard, we talked about how the fact that it's no longer going to be compatible with the 11th gen CPUs that are coming out. And there's some more details coming out about why that is the case. It's not just power delivery, but it also apparently has to do with having an older version of Intel's management engine. So they can't communicate with the Rocket Lake chips over sideband. They have to use different signals and it essentially just comes down to 
Intel didn't think far enough ahead for cross compatibility. So these motherboards are only good for one generation because they don't care about the consumer. You can give me all the technical reasons, but it comes down to that. You didn't want them to, so you didn't think about it. But Epic is thinking about all new ways to make you completely uncomfortable with their meta human tools so that you can see creepy faces and design them so easily. It, I mean, this obviously is a really ingenious piece of technology. It's amazing how much you can control and make look good, but it's just also slightly uncanny valley feeling, right? Just viewing them talk, it almost looks like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn facial animations. And all I can think is when I see this one is Kevin Sorbo screaming, DISAPPOINTED! DISAPPOINTED! Which CD Projekt Red is likely disappointed at this stage because it seems like source codes for their games are going up for bidding. We talked about in an episode of Hot News yesterday about how a hacker got their hands on the source code material and threatened that unless CD Projekt Red complied, they were going to put them up for auction. CD Projekt Red instead said, nope, we're not going to comply. We're just going to let everybody know what's going on. And now they have been officially listed with a starting bid for all of the Witcher 3, Cyberpunk and all of that at a million dollars the starting bid allegedly for the Gwent setup for $1,000. Obviously, if people actually want the source code, it would just go up in price and start from there. But a million dollars to get everything that CD Projekt Red has ever worked on. It's it's a sad situation. Which just to bring us back to the real sad situation of what's going on with the mining stuff, uh, it looks like it's just, it's ramping up again. EVGA launching their 1300 watt mining power supply. As you can see right here, it's gonna have a whole bunch of eight plus six pin PCI Express power connectors and deliver that 1300 watts of power so that you can mine all them crypto juices, which is taking up a lot of power worldwide. A new study came out from Cambridge University, which says that Bitcoin consumes more electricity than the entire country of Argentina, 121.3 six terawatt hours a year is how much Bitcoin mining consumes, which Bitcoin mining, in case you're not familiar, let me just give you a little uh, briefer here, is how you validate the transactions on the Bitcoin network. So in order to validate the transactions, you have to mine, which then obviously rewards you in some form of Bitcoin. But this leads to massive inefficiencies, as we're seeing here. The Visa network, which processes way more transactions, does so at a fraction of the power costs. And this is something that has kind of come up in the conversation surrounding cryptocurrencies. And Bitcoin is just their environmental impact is too damn high to actually make them broadly usable to the general consumer. Obviously, there's things that can be changed, different cryptocurrencies addressing that. But also one of the things that came out with Tesla saying that they're buying one 1.5 billion dollars in Bitcoin just to kind of start accepting it is that with studies like this that kind of goes against your ethos of trying to protect the environment you're buying into a system that's actually worse for the environment than systems that you already use and even though it might be cool and technological it doesn't necessarily bode well for the environmental impact that you're wanting to have on the world which is just what commentators are saying and my comments on this next article is hell yes, because Clone High is coming back way, way back in the 1980s, not anymore, way, way, way now in the 2020s, we're getting Clone High thanks to HBO Max. I'm signing up, I, it's, it's happening. HBO Max, you're getting my subscription. They're committing to bringing it back. The original creators uh, went on to do great things like Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs, 21 Jump Street, the Lego movie, and executive producers on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse factually the best Spider-Man movie ever made. So, so the Clone High was the jumping grounds for that. Also, Bill Lawrence, the creator Scrubs, was then also the creator. Clone High was amazing. And if you missed it, I'm so sorry. It only ran for one season. It's kind of dated now, but if they can make it as good as it was, this, this is the kind of thing that gets me really excited. I would love to see this. Oh, I like your funny words, Magic Man. They're also apparently going to be launching an adult version of Scooby-Doo known as Velma or an adult spinoff and then a show known as Fired on Mars. But I don't care about any of that. All I care about is Clone High and I care about saving your time. So we're going to exit this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Get subscribed so that you can stay up to date on all of the tech news that's coming. Don't forget that you can check out any news from yesterday in case you missed that. And we have another episode coming up later today. Day, so be sure to peep your eyeballs on the YouTube for when that drops at 3 p.m. Eastern. With that being said, I've been Brett, your host. I will continue to be Brett, but not your host because I'm not going to host you in my house. And that's the end of everything.
Goodbye.